ever had somebody that you know and you watch the way that they move you watch how they act you watch the way that they do things and you get really confused by it like why would they do it like that doesn't that doesn't make any sense to me i don't understand their reasoning behind their method so then you talk to them and you ask them, hey, hey, what's the reason that you do this? Uh, what's your method or your thinking behind when you do it that way? And they explain it to you. And it's like, oh, OK, ah, I, I didn't see it that way at first. But now that you've explained it to me, I got it. That is absolutely not the case with the Ravens and this offense and Greg Roman uh, and, and, and the play clock, because this again keep talking about it it's been an issue for years years and years and years and years and years it's, it's nothing new and what's crazy and i know a lot of y'all have seen that same article that's been floating around since what 2012 or 2013 something like that that talked about greg roman and, and the, the clock management and the poor clock management um and, and it's when you read that article most of the same things still apply to this day they literally do and that's a shame. But the Ravens, they, it's like they just keep embarrassing themselves. And anyway, let's just get to the quote. Um, and this was about the play clock management. Greg Roman said, uh, what we're talking about is a race to be in control. If we snap an average of four seconds later than other teams over the course of a 70 play game, then you're talking about four to five minutes where their offense can touch the ball. Those are treasures. That is probably a verbal treasure that he should have kept buried. Seriously, because it's, just, it's like the Ravens just, they're embarrassing themselves. That is such a scary mentality to have in a football game. We're, we're playing keep away. We're not playing, oh, we're trying to get, no, we're playing keep away so their team will have less time of possession. That's just... That's embarrassing, in my opinion. Um, and again, I know people are going to get on Greg Roman. And I, I, I get it. But Greg Roman didn't employ himself. This is not like this is a philosophy thing, man. Same conversation, man. Same conversation, man. It's the philosophy. The Ravens have philosophical issues, man. They really do. They have wasted, wasted the last four years with Lamar Jackson. Wasted. This is why some of us get so frustrated with the things that they do because you got something so special at the quarterback position and this is how you choose to operate, play keep away? Come on, man. It's just, it's embarrassing. He also mentioned how uh, when you're having operational issues and now you're not in control and you're rushing and things are hectic, that's not what you're looking for. Specifically last week, we had headset issues, communication issues, and technical difficulties. All right, yeah, I, I get that. So when things aren't working correctly, yeah, that's an issue. But to be strategically getting these play getting the plays in late, calling the plays late, just doing everything late. To do that strategically, it's embarrassing. It just, it, it makes everything harder for everybody on offense. And I, like, I know some people will be like, oh, well, hey, it could be a schematic thing to where if you're getting the play, if, you, if you're getting the plays in later, if, if they get into the line later and all that stuff and snapping the ball later, hey, that gives the, the defense less time. That gives them less time if they get into the line later. But they get into the line late, and it gives your, your quarterback less time. It gives your offensive line less time. It gives your tight ends, receivers, running backs. It gives everybody less time because everything is already – he talked about how he doesn't – when it's hectic and you're not in control, that's when things can go bad. But it's like the Ravens put themselves in these positions for things to be hectic and for things to go bad even without a broken headset, even without uh, the, 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 the earpiece or whatever, the mic not working from Greg Roman to Lamar or whatnot. It, it's like they, they set themselves up for failure. Before the plays even get started, a mindset like that, a mentality like that, you're already setting yourself up for failure. 
Like really, really playing keep away in the NFL. You're playing keep away. You're playing it safe. You're playing it safe. This is why I keep I keep saying they the last four they wasted it. And you know what? I won't even say the last four years, but I say the last three for sure. Because I'll take out 2019. I'll, I'll take it out because 2018 they didn't know. Lamar took over. Yeah, they they went what seven and one, whatever it was. And as a matter of fact, I was just like I was just watching the vlog from the playoff game, uh, that Chargers game. Um, so 2018, I won't count that. 2019, I won't even count that because Lamar came out of nowhere, came out of nowhere and took over. But after that, just waste, wasted, wasted opportunities, wasted potential, wasted, absolutely wasted. 2020, wasted. 2021, wasted. 2022, wasted. So much of the same stuff. And it's like, what, what's gonna, what, what, what reason does, what, what reason would Lamar Jackson have to want to stay with the Baltimore Ravens? Because something that he's talked about, um, obviously he wants to get paid. Obviously, like who wouldn't want to get paid at their job? Uh, but he also talks about how he, he wants to win. Hearing stuff like from your offensive coordinator. This is your this is the guy calling the shots on offense to hear stuff like that. It, it, you just got to look at it and laugh and be like, man, oh, boy, however the season goes, I can't wait till it's done. There have been reports like the one that Skip talked about, where you talked about Lamar being sort of checked out. Lamar showing up late to meetings, missing practices and stuff like that. And some people, they were like, oh, no, that's Skip Bayless. We, we don't, that, he don't know nothing. Even though, like, they realize Skip is one of the most, he be trolling. Like, it, when it comes to LeBron James, Skip Bayless, boy, he be trolling. And when it comes to Tom Brady, too, those, those are two people, man. Like he, and when it comes to Dak Prescott, no, actually the Cowboys, he'll get on them. He'll get on them. But when it, oh, actually three people. When it comes to LeBron, he'll always get on LeBron. No matter what good LeBron does, he will always get on LeBron. He'll be waiting for him to mess up. But he'll be chilling and stuff. With Tom Brady, no matter how bad Tom Brady does, Skip Bayless, he will always take up for Tom Brady no, no matter what. And also another one who he'll take up for no matter what is Baker Mayfield. He will, and, and it's like, it's funny hearing him when he talks about those. Cause, you know, Skip having fun, man. But Skip is also somebody that's highly respected uh, throughout sports journalism, period. Whether you like what he has to say or not, he is somebody that's highly respected throughout sports journalism. So when that report came out, I was like, oof. And I know the, the timing of it, it made it look weird. It was like, oh, yeah, this is right before LeBron. I mean, not LeBron. Lamar getting ready to go up against Skip Bayless's, his, uh, his guy, Tom Brady. Because it came out the day of the Bucks game, the Ravens Bucks game. But it just makes so much sense. You hear stuff like this, it's like it's it's laughable. It's it's, it's really laughable for somebody to to get up there and and say that seriously and be serious about it. And I don't think I don't even think this is the first time that we heard this before. Because I'm pretty sure that they've said that them getting to the the getting the plays off late and whatnot. I'm just pretty sure that we've heard that that was strategic before. I forgot was it from Harbaugh or was it from Roman? I, I think it was from Harbaugh, but I, I don't even remember. But I'm I'm pretty sure we heard this before. But regardless if we did or not, we heard it today, and that's embarrassing. If, if I'm Lamar, you know how like you work at a job and you work at a job that, and I'm not saying Lamar doesn't like his job, um, but you know how you work at a job and you're just like, man, I, I, just, I just ain't feeling it like that. And you just, you, you're working there to make ends meet, to, to pay your bills, but every day you, you're just checking. You're just checking till it hits five o'clock. You're just waiting every day. As soon as you punch in, you get there at nine and you all, all, always looking at the clock. Cause you're just ready to go. You ready to go? I don't know, man. I, I I could not blame Lamar if he felt like that. Just ready to go. Stuff like this, man. 
the way the team has built, the, the way that they build the team, the way that they construct this roster. Again, you 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 got you got somebody that's again that they, they recently over the past couple of years they've been throwing that little generational word word around a lot more than I think they should. But you actually do have somebody who is a generational talent. Not a generational talent, an offensive line, running back, of course not receiver, tight end, D-line, cornerback. And no offense to those other positions, obviously. But you have a generational talent at the quarterback position. And this is a position that you like it's it's hard to find it's hard to find a good quarterback in this day and age it's very and when you actually do find one in my opinion this is just my opinion i think you should actually cherish it and and do your best to hold on to it and do your best to really maximize it ravens haven't done that they haven't done that and again that's that's why i think they're not going to it lamar jackson so anyway man um go ravens uh hope they win against the broncos on sunday um it's crazy because th that's why i always say don't discount fans don't discount what fans see don't discount what fans understand don't discount fans at all because fans just because they're fans does not mean they are stupid so many fans uh just begged begged this team hey they need to run no huddle more. They need to do it. And because when we've seen it in the past, we've seen it have more success. But it's like the Ravens just, it's like they refuse. I don't know what it is. And th this is, it's like, it's, it's crazy because with the Ravens, the no huddle works. And again, you don't have to run it 24-7. Nobody's asking that. But run it a lot more often. But with the no huddle, it works. But this strategy is the exact opposite of no huddle. It's the exact opposite. No huddle, pick up the pace, move faster. This strategy, slow it down, get there late. Yeah, take your time. And nobody's saying you need to rush stuff. But it's just like Ravens, it, it seems like Ravens are afraid of balance. They're afraid of balance. Like on, on, on offense, it's like, all right, hey, run, 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 run. And the run game is cool, but they're like, pass. We ain't worried about a pass game like that. We got our run game. Remember? Build a bully, right? That's that phrase that so many people love you. Build a bully. Because I think Eric DeCosta said that in his first press conference. Build a bully. This is, ugh. This is, this is sad, man. But it is what it is at this point. Again, this, this offseason, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to see how everything goes down. Uh, what these Baltimore Ravens do, what these Baltimore Ravens don't do, uh, but just gonna, it's going to be very interesting to see how they operate. Very interesting to see how they operate. Uh, what pieces they move, what pieces they let go, what pieces they retain, what they prioritize, what they value, what they invest in. But again, even though I know uh, Eric Weddle said it about the team back when he was playing for the team. But by the way that they've been moving, these actually are uh, the same old Ravens.